Last week, the Pennsylvania Senate passed three constitutional amendments, including one about voter ID. And the package now awaits approval from the House and our WNY State Capitol correspondent, Brendan Scanlon. He joins us live to break down the details and whether or not you're going to see it come spring for the ballot. Good evening, Brendan. Renata and Nick, good evening. So Senate Bill 1 originally only included voter ID. However, last week before it passed the Senate, two additional constitutional amendments were tacked on. Uh, but we're going to focus specifically on the voter ID amendment this evening and why some are for it and, of course, against it. So most of our concerns have to deal with the, the lack of clarity. For those opposed, like Elizabeth Randall with the ACLU of Pennsylvania, voter ID is... It's a solution without a problem. Randall has more questions than answers, like what exactly counts as a government-issued ID. They say that it is an unexpired government-issued identification. That's that's it. We don't know what that could be. She says the proposed amendment would negatively impact those without a license, like many senior citizens and those who move frequently. A disproportionate effect on older, uh, rural and younger, typically people of color. And the same thing with people who are moving a lot. If you don't update your ID, then you're going to have some problems. Randall says the constitutional amendment does not provide enough information for voters to make an informed decision. They say let the people decide, right? But it's not clear. It, I don't know what the voters exactly are deciding on. I think this is going to provide a level of comfort for a lot of people in Pennsylvania that their elections are safe and secure. But Senate Bill 1 sponsor Dan Laughlin says his constituents, as well as the majority of American voters, want voter ID. We have this distrust now. Uh, of our voting process. And this is going to help ease those people's fear. Laughlin says he does not believe there is widespread voter fraud, but believes his legislation provides a common sense approach, especially for mail-in applications, which he says are currently accepted without proper identification. If you don't have either a social security number or a state issued ID number, then there's just a box you check that says, well, I don't have one and, and you move on and you can vote anyway. He acknowledges that some details need to be sorted, but that it will ultimately be handled by the whole legislature and the governor. The details of what ID that will be acceptable to use uh, still needs to be ironed out. Uh, that's, you know, that's going to take place in the legislature if this passes. And as you just heard Senator Laughlin telling me that if uh, the measure makes it onto the ballot and is approved by voters in the spring primary. Uh, it would ultimately have to be up to the legislature, the House, the Senate, as well as Governor Shapiro to come up with some of those final details as we just heard some of those questions that still need to be answered. Uh, Laughlin said negotiations during that process could include things like pre-canvassing, which he and many others here in Harrisburg support. I'll have much more information as far as what some of those negotiations or compromises might look like, as well as additional information on uh, whether voter ID even stands a chance in the House, where again would need to be approved before it could make it on to the ballot. All that and more up on our website, WENY.com. But for now, reporting live at the Pennsylvania State Capitol for WENY News, I'm Brendan Scanlon.